U.S. officials have provided an update on the four Americans who were kidnapped on Friday after crossing the border into Mexico. Two were found dead. The other two are alive, but one of them has been seriously injured. Two U.S. citizens were returned to the United States. The bodies of two other U.S. citizens killed in the same incident were also recovered. We're providing all appropriate assistance to them and their families. We extend our deepest condolences to the family and loved ones of the deceased. We thank our Mexican and U.S. law enforcement partners for their efforts to find these innocent victims, and the task forward is to ensure that justice is done. Entering Mexico, the four Americans were caught in fighting between rival cartel groups. U.S. officials says one of the cartels mistook them for drug smugglers. Reports say the Americans were from South Carolina and went to Mexico because one of them was scheduled for cosmetic surgery. The Mexican city is across the border from Brownsville, Texas. Mexican officials say one suspect is in custody. For more on this story, we have reached journalist Tony Waterman, who's been following the story. She joins us live from Austin, Texas. So, Tony, tell us what happened. Well, in the early hours of Tuesday morning, uh, authorities became aware that these individuals were in a rural part of Matamoros uh, on the way to the Gulf Beach uh, called Baghdad Beach. And that's where they found these individuals, U.S. officials saying that the bodies of the deceased have been recovered, but they have not yet been repatriated back to the U.S. They remain in Mexico where they are being examined by the, coron uh, the coroner's office uh, to see how they died and when they died. Those two Two survivors have been back in the U.S. for most of the day. They are receiving medical treatment at a hospital in Texas. And as you mentioned, one of them is, is severely injured. And whether or not those injuries are life-threatening is still unclear at this moment. The Biden administration says that it has been in touch with these families and that it wants accountability. Attacks on U.S. citizens are unacceptable no matter where or under what circumstance, circumstances they happen. We will continue to work closely with the Mexican government to ensure justice is done in this case. This is a group of very close friends that had traveled from South Carolina down to Brownsville, Texas, and then into Matamoros on uh, Friday because one of those uh, friends was meant to undergo a medical procedure. But very quickly after they crossed the border, they found themselves in a barrage of bullets. We have this very graphic video uh, showing when they were kidnapped. You can see uh, bodies being dragged uh, across the ground, some of them looking quite lifeless and hauled into the back of a white pickup truck at gunpoint. The FBI thinks that this is a case of mistaken identity, that these individuals were simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. The uh, Mexican officials saying that a 24-year-old has now been detained in connection to this incident. Uh, that individual found guarding these American victims. And so this part of Mexico is known to be dangerous, yet people continue to travel there for medical tourism. Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, Mexican officials say that close to one million Americans cross the border every single year to seek out medical treatment. A lot of the procedures, a lot of medication costs a fraction of the price in Mexico than it does here in the United States. But Matamoros is located in Tamaulipas um, state in Mexico, which is one of the most dangerous crime-ridden areas in the entire country. It is largely controlled by the Gulf drug cartel and thousands of, Ameri uh, of uh, Mexicans, rather, have gone missing through the years. We have seen an intensification of turf battles between these uh, criminal organizations. So it is a very dangerous area. The government does not want Americans traveling there. It is a level four, which is on par with the likes of Iran and Afghanistan and Syria. But we still have people making this dangerous trek as they seek out medical care because sometimes they just simply can't afford it here in the United States. Tony, thank you. Journalist Tony Waterman live in Austin, Texas.